Hi everyone, I'm Ayaz Akram from University of California, Davis, and in this talk, I will discuss our work on GemFiFR, which is a tool to do experiments with Gem5. So GemFiFR is a tool to do experiments with Gem5 in a more structured and reproducible way, and ART in GemFiFR actually stands for Artifacts Reproducibility and Testing. So the main motivation behind GemFiFR is that there isn't any evaluation framework for Gem5 today. And the state of working with Gem5 today is very clumsy. The multiple components involved in any experiment and the interaction between these components are usually managed by the user. Moreover, the way of creating these components is not standard and is usually not documented as well. Take an example of a full system simulation in which you might have to create a disk image. So today, the online help that is available to create disk images to use them with Gem5 may or may not work. As a result, the users would download all disk images or they might create a new disk image and then separately compile their benchmarks and add them to the disk image after mounting it to their file system. Now this kind of work, this kind of state of working could be problematic and why it could be problematic. Let's look at the black block in this slide. On the left side is what, let's say, I intend to do. That is to update the bash RC file of my disk image. If by mistake, as shown in the right side of this block, I end up adding just one slash on my path to the bash RC file, I would end up updating the bash RC file of the host system. This is not the only problem that could result because of this kind of state of working with Gem5. There are other problems like you could forget which version of the components you were using at a particular time, or you could overwrite your results. So the main job of Gem5 art is to reduce the probability of such errors. So Gem5 art tries to identify the structure among different components that are involved in any experiment. For example, in a full system simulation, different components feed other components, and finally, results are generated. So Gem5 art tries to streamline this workflow and make sure that all these components that are involved in an experiment, they are given a unique identity and that they're stored in a database and that the interaction between these components, it takes place in a standard way. Uh, so the goals of Gem5 art include to enable structured experiments through standardization of the workflow and through automation of the complicated processes involved in any experiment, to enable reproducibility, to enable resource sharing among multiple users, to have an extendable setup, which could be extended not only to the different configurations of the same experiment, but to the other experiments as well, to enable studies across experiments and to provide support of easy documentation of the experiments. There are three main components of Gem5Art, artifacts, runs, and tasks. Artifacts are the components involved in any experiment. For example, Gem5 Binary, Gem5 Source Repo, and the benchmarks. Gem5 Art relies on different uh, um, attributes of an artifact, like hash, a UUID, name, and type, to, to maintain a unique identity of the artifact across the timeline when an experiment is running. And these artifacts are also stored in a database. Gem5 Art runs are the objects which contain all the information that is necessary to run any Gem5 job. And tasks are the actual jobs which execute whatever was defined by Gem5 Art run objects. Gem5 Art also interacts with some external components, which include a disk creator. So this disk creator is a tool which automatically creates a disk image once a template file is given to it. And we are using Packer to do this for now. For a database, we use MongoDB and Gem5Art also relies on a job scheduler or a manager, which could be as complicated as salary to as simple as path and multiprocessing library. Um, currently, Gem5Art supports both of these. So the interaction between the main components of Gem5Art and these external components, it takes place uh, through an interface which is provided by Gem5Art. So from a user's perspective, this is how the workflow looks like. A user would use Gem5 Art Artifact Library to create all the artifacts necessary to run any experiment, and these artifacts would be stored in the database as well. 
then the user would use gem5r to run library to create the run objects that are necessary to do the experiments that the user is interested in. And finally, gem5r tasks library would use the gem5r run objects and then execute them on the actual hardware using a job manager. And once the results are generated, those would be stored in the database as well. And finally, a user can query the database directly through the Python API of MongoDB or through an interface which is provided by Gem5Art itself. So all of this interaction that the user has to do with Gem5Art libraries, it happens through uh, Python scripts, which we call launch scripts. And we have found those launch scripts to be short in length. On average, we found them to be 150 lines of code for most of the popular benchmark suites. And majority of those um, lines of code actually include feeding the user attributes of the artifacts that the user wants to use for the experiment. So we have been using Gem5Art in our research group for past six months, and we have been able to run more than 4,000 experiments with it. And we, we found it to be useful in ways which would have been much harder to do otherwise. So one of the things we have used Gem5Art for is rigorous testing of Gem5. We used it to test Gem519 and then to test release candidates of the uh, Gem520 release and found multiple bugs, which were eventually fixed. So one of the tasks that we do with Gem5Art is the Linux boot test. As you know, Gem5, Gem5 is a full system simulator. So Linux kernel is an important benchmark to certain the working status of Gem5. And the configuration space for such tasks is large. We rely on five latest long-term support Linux kernels and multiple CPU models, memory systems, and number of CPU cores. So the kind of results we could generate through these tests are shown in the slide over here. I have two different status plots, one for classic memory system, the other for massive level memory system. And these plots show the working status of Gem5, the boot Linux kernel, for five different kernels, four different CPU cores on the y-axis and on the x-axis, four different CPU models. And as you can see in the classic memory system, KVM and atomic CPU works mostly. For all three CPU, there are a couple of cases where the simulation times out and it does not work successfully. So with gem 5 such kind of status plots could be produced easily. Due to the ability of gem 5 art to store the results of all experiments in a database, it's very easy to do studies across experiments. For example, in this figure here, I have a visualization of the simulation time of two different versions of gem 5 One is gem 5 19 and the other is the earlier version of gem 5 20 staging branch. On the x-axis, I have um, experiment number, which correspond to the test configuration of different Linux boot tests. And the green dots in this visualization refer to Gem520, and the red dots refer to Gem519. And each correspond, each pair is, of, of, of the dots is connected to the black line. As you can see, there are many red dots for which the corresponding green dot lie on the zero simulation timeline which basically shows that those were the configurations for which Gem520 failed. This was eventually mapped to the O3 CPU failures in Gem520 and was eventually fixed as well. But with Gem5Art, it's much easier to figure out such working status issues by doing cross-experimental studies. So again, let me point out that this is not something which was impossible to do with, before Gem5Art, but with Gem5Art, it's very easy to do. And the other thing this, this visualization helps us to see is the simulation time comparison among two different simulator versions. And as you can see, most of the green dots are generally lower than the red dots, showing that Gem520 is doing better in terms of the simulation performance. So another thing that Gem5Art helps us to do is the organized experimental setup. We have used Gem5Art to do studies with most of the popular benchmark suites like SPEC 2006 and 2017, NAS Parallel Benchmarks, GAP Benchmark Suite, Parsec, and some micro benchmarks as well. And all of these benchmark suites, they rely on complicated setups to compile them, 
And usually to create a disk image, user has to manually intervene many times. And also when you have to run with jump five, run them with jump five, you obviously would use multiple configurations of the simulator. And overall, it would lead to a complicated setup. With jump five art, all of this is done in structured way that disk images are created in an automatic way. Um, and no user manual in intervention is needed. And we have found that it's much more convenient to do this these experiments with Gemfy Art. And the artifacts, the scripts, and the documentation needed to run these benchmark suites would be available in Gemfy Resources repo. And we also hope to provide a status page showing the working status of all of these benchmarks with Gemfy 20 on the Gemfy web page. And we hope to keep on updating that as the new Gemfy versions keep on appearing. Another good use case of Gem5 art is the Gem5 validation studies. So Gem5 validation studies usually rely on multiple configurations of the simulator to be tested simultaneously. And it's very easy to do or to manage such studies with Gem5 art and would be very hard to do them otherwise. So as I talked about this earlier as well, that with Gem5 uh, art, we want to have a setup which could easily be extended to other experiments. So as I said earlier that with Gem5 art, we rely on Gem5, sorry, we rely on these launch scripts to interact with Gem5 art. And if you want to extend your experiments to first to new configurations, all it takes to do is to update those launch scripts. For example, if you want to update your Linux boot test to new Ruby memory protocols or to let's say new Linux kernels, all you have to do is to update your launch script to add these new entities once you have created these artifacts already. And this usually takes just a couple of minutes and then you can easily launch your jobs. In order to extend your experiments to totally new experimental setup is not hard as well with Gem5 art. Usually you have to update your launch scripts to point to these new experimental setup. Um, for example, going from spec 2006 to spec 2017 was very straightforward. We found that all we had to do was that in the spec 2006 launch scripts, update the benchmark names, and then in the Packer scripts that are needed to create the disk images for spec benchmarks, update the location of the disk image ISO file and the spec configuration file, which is needed to compile the benchmarks. And usually it's a very straightforward job. And above all, with Gen5 art, we don't have to rely on the manual backups or on any random documentation to enable reproducibility. Rather, Gem5 art automatically gives us this reproducibility. And finally, before I conclude this talk, I would like to point to the resources that you might uh, need if you have more questions with Gem5 art. So Gem5 art is available as um, GitHub repository. You can create an issue if you want, or you can rely on Gem5 mailing list to ask questions. We also provide Gem5 art documentation, which is a detailed documentation and provide tutorials to set up different experiments. And finally, um, we will, as a Gem5 team, will be available on June 3rd during the Gem5 workshop in case you have any questions. And I would also like to point out that Gem5 art is an open source tool and we would appreciate any contributions. Thank you. <laughs>